Hello there. Today I'll review the Noodler's Ahab fountain pen. Noodler's Inc. is an American company, although the pens are made largely or solely in India. I got this one at a pen store in Nashville, Tennessee for around 30 US dollars. It comes in a variety of colors, including clear and colored demonstrators. This marbled green one here is called like, Jade, I think. It has an interesting large push-pull piston converter that will screw in, but it can be converted to an eyedropper where the barrel is filled entirely with ink. The nib is a number six size and it has an ebonite feed. It comes with Noodler's unique steel flex nibs, but can be easily swapped. It does post well with a good friction fit. The Ahab has a decent shape and feels good to hold, but the finish is just basic plastic and it's rather roughly put together. I wouldn't call it a beautiful pen, but it's very affordable, so that's a fine trade-off. When I bought it, this is the only one the store had to offer, but I recommend a solid color instead of this design that looks a bit like a factory defect. There's not much metal in it, but the plastic is thick and it holds a lot of ink, so it doesn't feel too lightweight overall. I wouldn't call this a classy pen, but it does write very well. More on that later. The build quality is reliable, although not at all seamless. It'll be a workhorse, but not an elegant one. The clip is designed to mimic the shape of a sperm whale, which is illustrated on an excellent instruction page that comes with the pen. It has a firm clip with uh, plenty of usable give to it, and it's arched far enough out that you can pinch it to open it and get it over a stubborn, thick pocket. Uh, the pen has a screw cap that takes two and a half turns, which I think is a bit too much for steady capping and uncapping all the time. It posts firmly and it won't fall off, but there isn't a reassuring click and it can be a little crooked. Nevertheless, an intentional post will keep it secure. The filling system is somewhat unique. Other pens have pistons too, like in converter pistons, but this special screw-on piston converter is just for this pen and it holds a large amount of ink, much more than a standard international converter. And that really helps because when flexing, this pen can use up a lot of ink quickly. It's possible to convert this pen to an eyedropper since the barrel has no seams, nor holes, nor metal components, but it will require silicone grease on the threads and an extra o-ring seal. Noodler's pens are known to be finicky, and that's a good thing for tinkerers, which is a good trait for being a fountain pen user anyway. However, it can be a bit troublesome to get the nib and feed aligned just right. If the nib is too far out, the ink doesn't flow well. If the nib is too far in, there isn't much flex, so you have to move it around yourself and get a good sweet spot and balance between the length of the or how far the nib sticks out, rather. And also, I have found this particular pen to leak a little into the cap and on the grip section. And that may be due to the large nib invariably touching the inside of the cap when capping and uncapping, or perhaps the, the feed will scrape it a little too, which is the feed is ebonite, and so it's very saturated and wet. Um, then the inside of the cap will get ink on it, and then when you, tr you post it, it'll transfer to the barrel, or it can rub against the section and get ink on it too. Uh, I guess you can avoid this by removing the cap ever so perfectly so the nib doesn't touch the cap uh, interior at all, but if that's possible. Alright, now lo let's, let's, um, let's look at how it writes. Once you get the nib in the right spot, centered on that ebonite feed with the tines in line, you get excellent flex, and that's what this pen was designed for. It's meant to be an alternative to its smaller predecessor, the Noodler's Creeper, which has a smaller nib and less ink capacity. 
the, the Ahab here can get exceptional line variation with great control. A vintage gold nib will do it a little better and feel nicer to write with. However, for 30 US dollars or less, the performance of this pen really makes it an exceptional value. When writing with no pressure, it's very smooth and could be a daily writer. However, it's a bit messy compared to a, another standard fountain pen. Plus, the many cap turns aren't good for constant use, so it's not my go-to pen. But for calligraphy, it's excellent and makes for a great display of what a modern flex pen can do. I'm using a black ink that's also, an, also a Noodler's brand. It's called X-Feather. Uh, it's made to bleed not very much into the paper or not at all. So it's a little dry and almost feels like the old uh, toner for computer printers. A more standard ink would likely flow even better, although with an ebonite, ebonite feed, uh, this ink still flows pretty well. So if you are interested in flex writing and willing to mess around with the nib and feed a bit, this is really an outstanding choice, not only for the price, but in and of itself. The ink capacity and line variation are very notable pluses. I would pay double the price for this same pen with a more professional and non-cheap plasticky look. But as it is, it's still certainly worth buying. And it's it's fun. I do use it for calligraphy. And if a, if a flex pen is anything you are interested in, this flexes more than most modern flex pens. And the feed keeps up more than most do, most do too. So it's a perfect choice for beginner or to intermediate or even a professional for flex writing. All right, enjoy. Thank you very much.